Hello, friends, and welcome back to Storybook Nate. Today, we are reading Finding Nemo by Disney Pixar. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. Come on, Dad, Nemo called out. It's time for school. The little clownfish Nemo was ready for his first day of school. One of Nemo's fins was smaller than the other, so he was not a great swimmer. Nemo, however, didn't let it slow him down. But his father, Marlin, wasn't ready for Nemo to go. He was very protective of his son, and he worried a lot. All right, Marlin reluctantly agreed. Then he went over the safety rules. So first we check to see that the coast is clear, coached Marlin as he swam out of their anemone home. We go out and back in, and then we go out and back in, and then... Dad, Nemo interrupted. He tugged on his father's fin and pulled him out at last. Soon, Nemo and Marlin arrived at the schoolyard. The teacher, Mr. Ray, sailed in to take the children on a field trip. Bye, Dad, Nemo shouted as Mr. Ray swam away. Bye, son, Marlin called. Be safe. You're doing pretty well, remarked one of the other fathers to Marlin. I had a tough time when my oldest went out on the drop-off. Marlin gasped. The drop-off? The drop-off was at the edge of the reef. There a fish could swim right out into the open sea and right into danger. Marlin immediately tried to catch up with the school group. Meanwhile, Nemo and his new friends, Tad, Sheldon, and Pearl, sneaked away to look out over the edge of the drop-off. I know what that is. A butt, said Tad, pointing up at the bottom of a boat. Then Sheldon dared them to see who could swim the closest to it. Finally, it was Nemo's turn. Come on, Nemo, how far can you go? Tad challenged. Oh, um, my dad says it's not safe, Nemo said, not moving. At that moment, Marlin arrived. You were about to swim into open water, he accused. You think you can do these things, but you just can't, Nemo. Nemo was angry and embarrassed. As soon as his father turned his back, Nemo defiantly took off and swam all the way to the boat. Nemo, get back here, Marlin shouted, but it was too late. A diver appeared. He scooped Nemo up in a net, swam to the boat, and sped off. Marlin couldn't swim fast enough to catch up with the boat. When he swam into a stream of fish to ask for help, he slammed into one of them. Sir, are you okay? asked the friendly blue fish. Hi, I'm Dory. I have to find a boat, said Marlin. Hey, I've seen a boat. Follow me, she said. Marlin followed Dory until she suddenly turned around and said, Stop following me. Marlin was confused until Dory explained, I suffer from short-term memory loss. Marlin turned to leave and found himself facing a shark. Bruce the shark invited them to a party in a sunken submarine. The party was a meeting of sharks trying not to eat fish. While there, Marlin spotted a diver's mask that had been dropped by Nemo's captor. Marlin hoped the writing on the mask could help him find his son. Ugh, what do these markings mean? I can't read human, exclaimed Marlin. Well, we gotta find a fish that can, encouraged Dory. They both grabbed the mask, which snapped and hit Dory in the face. Ow, Dory cried as blood trickled from her nose. The smell of blood made Bruce want to eat fish again. The party was over. Bruce chased the two fish. Luckily, Marlin and Dory escaped from the sub with the mask, and Dory remembered she could read. But before she could read it, the mask fell into a deep, dark ocean trench. Dory and Marlin plunged into the scary blackness after it. They couldn't see a thing. Then Dory cried, I see a light. But the light turned out to be a hungry anglerfish's trap. The pair dodged the anglerfish's teeth just in time. As the anglerfish chased them, its light fell on something. Hey, look, a mask, 
Dory shouted. Read it, Marlin ordered, trying to keep the anglerfish away from Dory. Bring him closer. I need the light, Dory answered. Marlin led the anglerfish back and forth while Dory read the address on the mask. Then Dory and Marlin escaped in the nick of time. P. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney, said Dory proudly as they swam off. Now, where is that? wondered Marlin. It turned out that 42 Wallaby Way was a dentist office in Sydney, Australia. The diver who had caught Nemo was the dentist, and he put the little fish into his office aquarium. The aquarium was home to an interesting group of fish known as the Tank Gang. A friendly pelican named Nigel was perched on the dentist's windowsill, visiting the Tank Gang. From them, Nemo found out that he was going to become a gift for the dentist's niece, Darla. The Tank Gang told Nemo that the dentists had given Darla a fish last year, and it hadn't survived. I have to get back to my dad, cried Nemo, horrified. The leader of the tank gang, Gil, reassured Nemo that they would find a way to escape before Darla arrived. Meanwhile, back in the ocean, P. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney, Dorley proudly repeated the address over and over. Marlin asked a school of moonfish if they could tell him how to get to Sydney. The moonfish didn't want to help Marlin, but they were happy to help Dory. They formed themselves into an arrow pointing in the direction of Sydney. Great, said Marlin, rushing off in the direction they had indicated. Oh, hey, ma'am, the moonfish said to Dory. When you come to the trench, swim through it, not over it. I'll remember, said Dory, as she hurried to catch up with Marlin. I gotta tell you something, Dory shouted to Marlin. When she finally caught up with him at the edge of a scary trench, she couldn't remember what she needed to say. We're going to swim over this thing, Marlin said. Something's telling me we should swim through it, said Dory, but Marlin easily tricked her into forgetting and she happily followed him. As it turned out, danger was lurking in clear water above the trench. Dory was the first to find it. Ow, Dory yelled. A baby jellyfish had stung her. Marlin rushed over and shooed the baby away. Let's be thankful this time it was just a little one, Marlin said. But then when they looked around, Marlin and Dory discovered that they were surrounded by hundreds of jellyfish. This is bad, said Marlin. But Dory was giggling. Hey, watch this, she said, bouncing on the tops of the jellyfish. Marlin quickly made up a game of jumping on the jellyfish tops. But there was one rule. You can't touch the tentacles, Marlin explained. The race began. After a while, Marlin hopped out of the jellyfished forest. But when he turned around, Dory was nowhere in sight. Dory, Marlin cried. Then he saw her caught in a jellyfish's tentacles. Marlin swam back to his friend and dragged her out of the jellyfish forest. Then everything went black. Later, Marlin woke up to find that he was riding on the back of a sea turtle named Crush. Saw the whole thing, dude, said Crush. He was quite impressed with Marlin's bravery. Marlin and Dory were in a group of sea turtles traveling on the East Australian Current, headed for Sydney. Marlin told the turtles about his quest to find Nemo. The story passed quickly from sea creature to sea creature. Finally, Nigel, the pelican friend of the tank gang, heard about Marlin's search. The ride on the current was great fun for Marlin and Dory, but suddenly Crush called out, get ready, your exit's coming up, man. Thank you, dude, Crush, Marlin shouted as he and Dory left the current. They soon found themselves in very murky water looking for Sydney. Let's ask someone for directions, suggested Dory, spotting what looked like a small fish Far away, there is somebody. It's a fish we don't know. It could ingest us, Marlin said nervously. But Dory continued, Woohoo, little fella, she called. But soon Marlin and Dory discovered that the little fella was a giant whale. In one big mouthful, it swallowed them both. We're in a whale, 
shouted Marlin. Wow, a whale? You know, I speak whale. Dory listened carefully to the whale's loud moans. He said we should go to the back of the throat. Marlin was irritated. Of course he wants to go there. That's eating us. He says it's time to let go, Dory told Marlin. So Marlin let go. Suddenly, he and Dory soon found themselves being shot out of the whale's spout. They flew into air and then splashed back into the sea. When the two had recovered, they realized that they were in Sydney Harbor. You were right, Dory. We made it. We're going to find my son, cheered Marlin. All we have to do is find the boat that took him. But Sydney Harbor was full of boats. The two fish searched all through the night. The next morning, a hungry pelican scooped the exhausted pair of fish into his beak as he flew back toward the land. No, I didn't come this far to be breakfast, yelled Marlin. He braced himself in the pelican's throat so the bird couldn't swallow them. The pelican coughed and the two fish landed on a pier. Just then, Nigel arrived. I gotta find my son Nemo, screamed Marlin. Nigel recognized Marlin as Nemo's father. Hey, wait, hop inside my mouth, he told Marlin and Dorley. I can take you to your son. Back at the dentist's office, things were going badly for little Nemo. Niece Darla was due to arrive at any moment. The dentist had Nemo in a water-filled plastic bag, ready to give it to her. The dentist placed the bag with the panicked Nemo on a table. The tank gang instructed Nemo to push to the side of the bag so that it would roll out of the open window. But just as Nemo succeeded in getting the bag rolling, the dentist noticed. Oh, that would be a nasty fall, the dentist said, catching the bag as it settled down on a tray. Suddenly, the door to the office slammed open and Darla stomped in. But Nemo had an idea. He pretended to be dead hoping that the dentist would flush him down the toilet. From there, Nemo planned to swim to the ocean. Hello, Darla, honey, said the dentist to his niece. Oh, no, he murmured. When he noticed the motionless Nemo, the dentist quickly hid the bag behind his back so Darla would not see it. Moments later, the window burst open. In flew Nigel carrying Dory and Marlin. What the exclaimed the dentist when Nigel collided with him. The dentist dropped the bag holding Nemo onto a tray. A sharp instrument on the tray tore a small hole in the bag. Then from his view in Nigel's beak, Marlin spotted Nemo and he thought his son was dead. Nemo, he cried. Nemo heard his father's voice, but it was too late. The dentist had closed Nigel's beak and shoved him out the window. In the confusion, Darla had picked up the bag and swung it back and forth, chanting, Fishy, fishy. Nemo poured out of the hole in the bag and became stranded on a dental tool. The tank gang came to the rescue. With the help of his friends, Gil catapulted out of the tank, hit the dental tool with his tail, and launched Nemo through Darla's grabby hands into the spit sink. Nemo disappeared down the drain. Don't worry, Gil yelled to him. All drains lead to the ocean. Whoosh. Nemo swooped and swerved through the pipes. It was quite a ride. Back in Sydney Harbor, Marlin sadly said goodbye to Nigel and Dory. He swam past two crabs on a drainage pipe, and then he joined a school of grouper fish Marlin started the long swim home. Nemo, meanwhile, ended his ride through the pipes of Sydney. He popped up through a hole next to the very same two crabs. Oi, got a live one here, said one crab. Have you seen my dad? Nemo asked. But he soon realized that the crabs were only interested in catching and eating him. So off Nemo swam in the opposite direction that his father had gone. Before long, Nemo found Dory swimming in circles and crying. I don't know where I am. I think I lost somebody, but I need to remember. I'm Nemo, said the little fish. 
I'm looking for someone, too. Nemo, that's a nice name, murmured Dory, not paying much attention. The two fish searched together for a while. Suddenly, Dory remembered, Nemo! She grabbed the little guy's face tight with her fins. You're not dead, and your father... You know my father? asked Nemo. But Dory was already moving. This way, quick! Dory and Nemo swam over to the crabs on the pipe and asked them whether they had seen Marlin. I'm not telling, and there's no way you're going to make me, one of the crabs replied. Dory was in no mood for his attitude. She grabbed the crab and thrust him above the water for the hungry seagulls to see. The crab quickly gave Dory and Nemo the directions they needed. Nemo and Dory rushed to the fishing grounds to look for Marlin. Dad, Dad, yelled Nemo when he finally sparted Marlin in a crowd of grouper fish. Marlin rushed to Nemo. Father and son were together at last. Look out, yelled Dory as an enormous fishing net suddenly swept past them. The net missed Nemo and Marlin, but Dory and the grouper fish were caught. Help, screamed Dory. Deal, I know what to do, Nemo called, rushing to the rescue. No, 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 come back, shouted Marlin. He didn't want to lose his son again. Dad, said Nemo, I can do this. I know you can. Marlin finally agreed as Nemo swam into the net with the other fish. Nemo urged the fish deep inside the net to swim to the bottom, while Marlin told those near the outside of the net to do the same. Together, Nemo and Marlin rallied the fish to swim together, causing the net to break loose. All the fish escaped, cheering. Nemo and Marlin were reunited. Nemo and Marlin brought Dory back to their reef. Nemo started school again. He was overjoyed to be with his friend and Mr. Ray, the school teacher. Just as Mr. Ray started to pull away, Nemo looked back at his dad. Then Nemo asked Mr. Ray to wait. Nemo raced back and gave his dad a big hug. Love you, Dad, said Nemo. I love you too, son, said Marlin, holding tightly. Now, go have an adventure. And now we've reached my least favorite part of the book. No more book. Thanks for stopping by. Please subscribe for more content and keep reading.